Greetings, cloud enthusiasts. Today, we're embarking on a journey into the heart of Google Cloud's networking capabilities. Our mission? To construct a robust two-tier virtual private cloud architecture. The reason behind we are using Google Cloud's VPC. Our clients have applications hosted on leading cloud platforms including AWS, Azure, and GCP. Most of our clients utilize AWS, with some opting for Azure or GCP based on their respective benefits and requirements. Similarly, we have recently engaged with a new client interested in hosting their application on the Google Cloud platform. Accordingly, we have established a two-tier architecture VPC for their application, deploying VM instances within the VPC and implementing a load balancer to distribute traffic among these instances efficiently. VPC Network in GCP In essence, a VPC network can be likened to a physical network, albeit virtualized within Google Cloud. It serves as a global resource comprising regional virtual subnetworks housed within data centers, interconnected by a global wide area network. A VPC facilitates connectivity for various components within Google Cloud, including Compute Engine Virtual Machine Instances, Google Kubernetes Engine Clusters, Serverless Workloads, and other Google Cloud products built on Compute Engine VMs. Additionally, VPCs are instrumental in distributing traffic from Google Cloud external load balancers to designated backends. Subnets in GCP Within each VPC network, there exist one or more IP address ranges known as subnets. These subnets are regional resources, each with specific IP address ranges associated with them. There are four types of subnets designed for various purposes. 1. Regular subnets. 2. Private service connect subnets. 3. Proxy-only subnets. 4. Private NAT subnets. In auto-mode VPC networks, subnets are automatically created in each region. Conversely, custom-mode VPC networks begin with no subnets, granting complete control over subnet creation. Additionally, multiple subnets can be created per region as needed. Routes in GCP Google Cloud Routes delineate the pathways for network traffic to traverse from a virtual machine instance to various destinations. These destinations may reside within your Google Cloud virtual private cloud network, such as another VM, or extend beyond its boundaries. Upon creating a VPC network, it automatically includes a system-generated IPv4 default, Route 0.0.0.0/0. Unlike AWS and Google Cloud Platform, you don't need to manually create route tables, associate subnets with them, or add routes to internet gateways. GCP handles all of these tasks automatically when you create a subnet. If you want to completely isolate your network from the internet, or if you need to replace the default route with a custom route, you can delete the default route. This diagram illustrates a two-tier VPC architecture in the Google Cloud Platform. In a Google Cloud Platform, GCP, account, it's essential to have at least one project to create resources. You can have multiple projects within a single account to organize and manage your resources effectively. In the project, we have a VPC, which is a global resource. Subnets, on the other hand, are regional resources. These subnets can be connected by a global wide area network within the VPC. Furthermore, a single subnet extends across all availability zones within a region. Understood, since we're focusing on implementing a two-tier architecture, we'll proceed with configuring public and private subnets exclusively. In the private subnet, there are two servers deployed, each in separate availability zones. As they do not have public IP addresses, these servers can communicate internally within the network but not publicly accessible from the internet. Since the server can't able to access internet, it needs to download packages that need for the application and security patches and OS upgrades from internet. Here comes Cloud NAT Network Address Translation. It's a way to map multiple private addresses inside a local network to a public IP address before transferring the information onto the internet. This helps to improve security and decrease the number of IP addresses an organization needs. We have configured the private subnet to utilize Cloud NAT through the Cloud Router. This setup routes all traffic from the private subnet to Cloud NAT. As a result, our private servers can communicate with the internet via Cloud NAT for tasks such as downloading packages. Importantly, this configuration ensures that the servers remain inaccessible from the internet, 
as CloudNet prohibits external access. Within the public subnet, there is a server as Bastion Host, which is publicly available. Bastion Hosts are commonly used in secure network architectures, especially in scenarios where secure access to internal resources from external networks is required. So, the Bastion Host will be configured to have both inbound and outbound internet access. So, with the Bastion Host, the admin can SSH into the private servers to configure them for our application without exposing them directly to the internet. To ensure users can access our application despite the servers being inaccessible from the internet, we're utilizing cloud load balancing. This service distributes incoming traffic across multiple instances to ensure high availability and scalability. By fronting our application servers with a load balancer, users can access the application via the load balancer's public IP address or domain name, while the load balancer forwards requests to the backend servers in the private subnet. This approach maintains security by keeping the backend servers hidden from direct internet access while providing seamless access to the application for users. This is the architecture of a two-tier VPC in Google Cloud Platform. I will demonstrate the creation of the VPC along with the subnets and CloudNAT. The setup of the load balancer will be covered in a separate video. Things to be prepared by yourself before you start this demo. GCP Free Tier Account you can create a free tier account without a credit card and get $300 of credits for your account for the first three months. The Compute Engine API should be enabled. This can be done while you are entering into the GCP VPC Networks page for the very first time. So grab your favorite beverage, buckle up, and let's embark on this exciting journey into the world of networking in Google Cloud Platform. Please open your Google Cloud Console and select the project you wish to work on for this demonstration. Search for VPC Networks and click on the VPC Networks option. You can see there will be a default VPC. Leave it and click on Create VPC Network button. Enter a name for your VPC network. For subnet creation mode, if you select the automatic mode, it shows, it will create subnets in all regions with automatically allocated IP ranges. For us, we need only two subnets, so select Custom Mode. Click on New Subnet. This is a public subnet, so enter a name for this as public with an additional name as your wish. Select the region for this subnet. I am select US Central 1. Add an IPv4 address range for your subnet. I will add the address range as 10.10.10.0 slash 24. For private Google access, leave it off for public subnet. Click Done. Click on Add Subnet. We need another subnet as private. Enter a name for this as private with additional name. Select the same region that you've chose for the public subnet. Enter a different IPv4 range for this private subnet. I am gonna add 10.10.20.0 slash 24. Enable private Google access for private subnet. Click done. Under the firewall rules section, select the allow SSH rule. This is gonna need to SSH into over servers. Click on Create. VPC is getting created. Wait for some seconds to complete. VPC is created. Click on the name of the created VPC. Go to Subnets. You can see the private and public subnets are created. Go to Routes. Select the region where you created the subnets and click View. As you can see, the routes are automatically added to those subnets. Search for VM and click on the VM Instances option. Click on the Create Instance button. We need a Bastion host to connect to a private server. So before creating a private instance, let's create a public instance first. Select the region, same as the subnets. Scroll down. Enable Allow HTTP Traffic. Expand Advanced Options and Networking. Under Network Interfaces, click on Default. 
change the VPC network from default to the one that you have created, and also change the subnet to public. Since this is a public server, the external IP address should be as ephemeral, and click Done followed by Create. Instance is being created. Wait for some time. If you refresh the page, you can see the instance is created. Click the SSH button. It will automatically create a temporary SSH keys and transfers them into the server for you using IAM authentication. Click on Authorize. You have successfully logged in to the Bastion server. Need an SSH key to access the private server from this server. So, run SSH key gen command. Hit enter button three times to create it. The SSH key is stored in this path. Copy the file path and run cat command for it. This is the public SSH key. Copy this key. Go to GCP console and click on create instance. Now, we need private server to check it can access internet or not. Enter name as private. Select the same region that you have created your subnets. Click advanced options and networking. Replace the default VPC with your custom VPC and the subnet to private. As it is private, the external IP address should be none. Click Done. Click on Security. Expand Manage Access. Under Add Manually Generated SSH Keys, hit Add Item and paste the SSH key into the box. Click Create to create the instance. Wait for some time. The private server is created. It has only private IP. Copy that IP. Open the public server's terminal and run SSH, the username of the server and the private IP. The username will be the name of the IAM user. Type yes. We are on the private server. Try the curl command to connect example.com domain using internet. Since it does not have the public IP, this server can't reach the internet. If the private server wants to connect to the internet, it needs a NAT gateway. So, go to the GCP console and search for NAT. Click the Cloud NAT link. Click on Get Started. Enter a name for your Cloud NAT. NAT type should be public. Under Select Cloud Router, select your VPC and the region. For Cloud Router, click Create New Router. Enter a name for the router. And click Create. Under the Cloud NAT Mapping, for Source Endpoint Type, select the first one. Select Custom Option. And Subnets. Select the subnet name as private subnet. In CloudNet IP addresses, choose automatic. Click Create. CloudNet will create immediately. Wait for two minutes to replicate all changes to the VPC. After a couple of minutes, open the private server's terminal and run the curl command to see if the server can communicate with the internet. Yes, it can connect the internet. So, CloudNet is working fine. And there you have it. We've successfully created a two-tier VPC in Google Cloud Platform. Congratulations on completing our journey into the world of two-tier VPCs in GCP. We've covered a lot of ground, from basic setup to advanced configurations. We have implemented CloudNet to enable communication from our private VM instances to the internet. This ensures that the private servers remain inaccessible from the internet while allowing them to access the internet for downloading packages and security patches. As you continue to explore GCP networking, remember to leverage the flexibility and scalability of VPCs to design architectures that meet the unique requirements of your applications.
Do you have any questions? Please feel free to comment or contact us at our email ID or contact us page. We will be happy to reply to you. Easy Deploy is an authorized AWS cloud consulting partner. We have helped various organizations in adopting their cloud journey by architecting, implementing, and managing their environment with AWS, Azure, and GCP best practices. If you find this video useful, please hit a like button. Thank you.